Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Just ahead of Jeff Patterson, as always on a Friday, our Friday guest, today's guest, brought to you by Langley Chrysler. They have the vehicle for your next summer adventure. Whether you need a Jeep for the beach, a ramp for the fam, Rick, you can save up to twelve grand online or online at langleychrysler.com. Uh, Gretzky with TNT, not ESPN. Messi yeah, with ESPN. Yeah, they're, they're not together, but they're, yeah. Well, just to Thanks for elaborating on that. Clarity. Clarity. Give the clarity. Okay. Clarity is a huge thing. Okay there, Blue Jay. <laughs> uh, Jeff joins us uh, now. How are you, sir? I'm good. Hey, Donnie, and uh, hi to Tom Hankey there. <laughs> <laughs> Barfield. Don't get, get the oh, Jesse oh, Barfield. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Steeb. Jimmy hey, Key. Hey, hey, Jeff, we had on uh, Dave Haxtell uh, yep. about half an hour ago. And did that take you by surprise like it did everybody else? Well, Not the did, interview, uh, the fact he's the head coach. Yeah, no. First of all, let me say, like, and I don't want to sell myself short here, but I'm feeling like the sort of dessert, uh, the, the fruit platter after somebody's been through two trips to the buffet on this show today. Like, mm -hmm. you had Henrik Sedin, mm -hmm. a new NHL executive, and a new NHL head coach, or second time around for Dave Hack. Like, that's a meaty first hour. Either one of those guys could have carried the first hour and you had them on together in the first hour of the program. Like that's a solid show. Uh, um, Henderson, give Henderson the credit. He's, uh, he's the I don't best. Like, I don't like to do that. Um, uh, well, we don't either. Cause yeah, uh, yeah. But, but we have to I, Donnie, the selection. Yeah. Like everybody, I, I think I was surprised. You know, I think a lot of times coaches and Dave touched on it. I think they are better the second time around. I, I think everybody wants to believe that they learn on the job and, you know, he made the jump from the college ranks, and it was a bit of a surprise then when, you know, Hextall hired Hextall, and, and, you know, he'd had a great track record at uh, North Dakota. I mean, that thing's been a hockey factory for years, and so I think he had earned his shot. You know, I had a look yesterday. I had forgotten that he had two 40-win seasons in Philadelphia, yeah. Yeah. never got out of the first round. Yeah. There were some goaltending issues uh, with the Flyers, as there have been for a few decades now. Uh, but he had relative success, and then in the fourth year, things kind of went sideways, and he got fired. But you know what I loved, I think, more than anything, and it, to me it didn't really matter who the, the crack had hired. I guess I had been surprised that it had taken as long as it did. I just love in the information age that they were able to keep yeah. this thing a secret no completely kidding. under wraps. And I know that that's kind of the way that Ron Francis conducts his business, but they've done it twice now with two like really big announcements, the, the logo and the name. Uh, they were able to keep that thing on the down low right until they had the announcement and then yesterday with the head coach. So good on the Kraken organization. You know, so many insiders and people poking around. And, you know, the, the, the organization can try to keep it quiet, but uh, the Hackstall side, like, he had to do his part. But, you know, the Leafs, they would have had to ask permission to talk to Dave Hackstall. Like, in the hockey world, news travels. And so uh, I just thought that was a really cool element to all of this in the information age and the social media age that they were able to keep it as quiet as they did until it was time to, to make the announcement. Yeah, I'm with you there, Jeff. That's uh, uh, very quiet. They kept it right up till. You are not with me. You're one of the guys that wants to get all the information. Well, yeah, 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 I was. And I was yes. texting with Elliot Friedman <laughs> the night before the morning. Nobody could get it. And, hey, you're right. Uh, good on Seattle. Uh, Jeff, Henrik Sedin, when I listen to these guys talk, I, I feel a lot better. Uh, uh, fresh voices, fresh ideas. If anything... They will bring some enthusiasm, some passion to that front office, which has been getting stale the last few years. Your thoughts on Henrik and Daniel after hearing them talk about what needs to be fixed and, and all that stuff. Yeah, and that was a terrific interview. I mean, I was there as part of the Zoom on Wednesday. I've had a few days to digest it all, but it was good to, to hear him sort of go two-on-one -on -one with you guys and, and just expound on some of the things that he said the other day. I know at the podium when they talked on Zoom, they talked a lot about team building and you know, I think that's an element that they can bring right away. They're not seasoned executives. They don't know about, you know, contract negotiations and scouting and all that type of stuff. But they know what has served them well on the good teams that they've played on, whether it's in the NHL or, you know, the Swedish programs, whatever the case. And so I, I do think that it's important that the organi organization values their opinion because right away I think that they will have an ability to have some input there 
I love the fact, guys, that they're on board now because July is going to be an extraordinary month in the news cycle uh, around the NHL, but particularly here in Vancouver with expansion and then the draft itself and free agency and relocating Abbotsford. And, you know, I think for the first month, uh, they're just going to be sponges. They would probably just sit in on a lot of these meetings and take it all in. But what a month to jump in with both feet. And so, look, they've been successful uh, and it's come through hard work. They were blessed with talent, but they applied that talent through the, the work ethic that they had. And that made them really good, better than really good hockey players. And, you know, I, I hope that they are in it for the long haul here. You know, it was interesting to hear Henrik say he doesn't think it's as bad as maybe it looks from the outside, but he's recognizing that, yeah, uh, there is a ton of work to be done to get this group back up and running. And I like the reason that they're doing it. I mean, I think they feel a sense of obligation to the city that has adopted and embraced them and that they've adopted as their home. They know what the Canucks mean to the city of Vancouver. They know that the Canucks aren't in a great place right now. And so, you know, they took a few years away for themselves just to get a little distance from the hockey club and their hockey careers. And I think they're honest when they say the time is right and they're coming back for the right reasons to try to help this hockey club get to where it was a decade ago. All right, Jeff, uh, the Canucks called uh, Alexander Edler's agent yesterday. They had a uh, talk, uh, set up the template to uh, re-sign him. And whether it happens or not, time will tell. I expect them to talk again before the Seattle expansion draft. If they do announce a deal, it'll be after the draft for obviously draft reasons. Uh, if, you, if you want Alexander Edler back, Jeff, what has to happen? You want a one-year, two-year deal, uh, how many minutes played, all that stuff. W- what comes to your mind when you think of Edler? Well, it's funny, just this week, Rick, when you know the Twins are back on board and now they have a, a voice at the table, Like it just feels so hard for me to believe that they would enter the equation and their recommendations would be that uh, the club walks away from one of their best friends and a guy that has you know, given everything to this hockey club for so many years. So I think it's just another dot to connect here that would think, uh, unless things go off the rails, that Alex Edler is going to be back. Uh, I think for a guy who's 35 going on 36 at some point in the new hockey season, I, I just don't think you can give term. I mean, he's made it abundantly clear he only wants to play here. I, I don't think that anything has changed in that regard, so I don't know the, how, how much leverage he has. And I just think, if you're going to continue to work with Alex Edler, it's got to be on your terms now. We know that they're handcuffed as far as the salary cap goes. So, you know, I I would just try to work on one-year deals, take it a year at a time at this point. Uh, I still think there is an opportunity for Alex Edler. Uh, My concern, as it has been throughout, is that if you bring him back and he's there and Travis Green has his options, that all of a sudden Alex Edler is going to be playing 20, 24 minutes a night, all the hard minutes in the penalty kill because guys like Hughes and Rathbone aren't going to be penalty killers for you. And, you know, we've just seen the speed of the game is a concern. Uh, Again, uh, Alex Edler defensively, I think in his own zone, is fine. In transition, there's some issues there. And it feels like the offensive taps have been turned off, right? Like he saw no power play time. We know that he chased that one goal, the elusive hundredth goal of his career all season long. The chase will continue if he's back next year. And so at this stage of his career, he's uh, basically a you know a defensive defenseman. There's still value for him. But, man, for me, it would be a one-year contract. And I think it has to be team-friendly. Like, they've lined his pockets. And he has provided great service all these years. But it, I don't think this is about you know, a money grab for Alex Edler. I think this is about uh, finding a way to prolong his career in a place that he loves and wants to play. And, you know, if they can find that sweet spot, then, yeah, I would expect that he's going to be back. But, boy, if they're giving him term at this stage of the proceedings, uh, that's not a road I would travel down. Um, that was above and beyond. That was much more than a fruit platter, uh, Jeff. Thank, <laughs> thanks so much for this. Appreciate it. Have a great weekend, guys. Stay cold or cool. And, yes, uh, well, try you to. are always cool. Stay safe. Yeah, thanks.